Hello people, uh, in diarrhea, it is very important to know the treatment in pediatrics, okay? So, first of all, in diarrhea, if a child has diarrhea, okay, this is very important here. If the child has diarrhea, you have to understand whether the child has dehydration or not, okay? So, here there are three things that you have to, uh, you can classify as whether the child has no dehydration or it has some dehydration or it has severe dehydration, okay? This is what you have to understand. You have to classify as the baby comes to you, you will check this baby has diarrhea, okay, the diarrhea is the chief complaint, okay, there are some loose stools, watery stools, more than normal frequency, okay, fine. Does this child have high dehydration or not, okay? So, how, how will a non-dehydrated child be? So, you will only say, non-dehydrated means, I think the child will be totally normal, I will not see any, um, uh, uh, <clears throat> any symptoms uh, which are very scary. So, how will this child be? It will be well alert. Look at here, go down. We are looking at this cute baby here. Um, this one. So basically, this child is well alert. It has normalized. Tears will be present. Mouth and tongue are moist. And it drinks normally. It is not thirsty. And the skin pinch goes back less than 2 seconds. So if you take the skin pinch uh, and you leave it, the skin's baby, baby skin goes back immediately. This may not be true in marasmus, quartier, etc. But most of the children and even if it is obesity, uh, obese uh, child, it might not look like that. Uh, it might not be like that. But these are the general rules to say that this child is not dehydrated. Okay. No dehydration is present. But what does this child have? The child has diarrhea. This much you are sure. But there is no dehydration. So now what is the treatment? Plan A. Plan A means what you will do. You just give some home treatment. You just tell the mother, give the baby zinc. Okay, zinc will reduce the frequency of the diarrhea. This is very important. And then you will ask the mother to add some extra fluids, right, to the, uh, whatever she is feeding. Continue feeding and come back if there are any danger signs. Some things like lethargy, if the child's condition continues to deteriorate, right, then you have to come back. And you can follow up after four days in this way. Also, another thing is if there is another danger sign like blood in stool, right? Blood in stool or if it feeds poorly, right? All this becomes danger signs. What else we saw? Deterioration. All this will become danger sign. Then uh, we will have to come back. Okay, so did you understand plan A? Plan A is done, people. So now let us move on. Now this uh, baby which has come to you with diarrhea <coughs> is looking like this. It is irritable. Guys, we are moving on. So please uh, be with us. So we finished A. Now we will go to B. B. Yeah. What comes after A? B. Yeah. So <coughs> this child here uh, is irritable. It's restless. It has sunken eyes. Absent tears. See, it's crying but no tears. Dry mouth, tongue. Thirsty, if you give water, it will be very happy. Drinks eagerly and the skin pinch goes back slowly. Okay, so this is the some dehydrated child. And uh, in this, uh, any of these two conditions, if it is there, it is sufficient. Restlessness, irritable, sunken eyes, absent ears, dry mouth, tongue, thirsty, drinks eagerly, skin pinch goes back slowly. Some dehydration, you have understood. Now, what is the treatment for the some dehydration baby? For the some dehydration baby, you will give plan B. Plan B means what? You will give it fluids, ORS, your standard oral rehydration solution. In this, you have three things, okay. This is where it uh, is just getting a little bit uh, extra for you. You have to talk about daily fluid replacement, deficit fl uh, replacement fluid and, and maintenance fluid, okay. So, what are the three fluid uh, things you are giving? Daily, daily fluid. Daily fluid. Deficit replacement. Deficit replacement. Maintenance fluid. Maintenance fluid. Okay. And each of these have a lot of values and calculations and all that. Okay. So basically you can remember around uh, 100 ml per kg like that you can remember. 100 ml per kg if you remember it should be working out. For a small baby it will be a little less 75 ml per kg. Okay. So just in general remember it is something around this. If you want to go to specifics there are a lot of values 100 ml per kg. If you give, that should be sufficient. So, for a 10 year old uh, child, 10 year, 10 kg, sorry, 10 kg child, you will give 1 liter, okay, of ORS kind of a thing. So, we are not going into the details. Something like this you can give, okay. 
then um, if you want to show we will show you the chart in the end if you want specifically then you will give zinc standard in diarrhea you should give zinc so that the frequency of the diarrhea comes down <coughs> then you will continue feeding come back if there are danger signs standard things and um, if uh, the child uh, improves move it to plan a if the child worsens move it to plan c this is standard thing you will write everywhere now if uh, this child has something extra like it has low weight or if it has some if it has another se severe classification then then what you should do then you should give ampicillin amoxicillin okay and you should also refer to hospital if the child is having low weight or another severe classification then only you are giving ampicillin amoxicillin right and you will refer the child to hospital so we are looked we have looked at this baby now which is irrit irritable restless some dehydration is present okay so if we finished a over b over next is what c very good now let's go up here so here you can see this uh, child how it is looking this is a severely dehydrated child here you can see the child is lethargic unconscious floppy very sunken dry eyes absent tears mouth is very dry tongue is very dry it drinks poorly even if you give it's really not interested in drinking okay drinks poorly it is not able to drink the skin pinch goes back very slowly this is a severely dehydrated child what will you do if you are a doctor for this baby so these are the, the things for which you decided that this is severely dehydrated now you will give it plan c now what is plan c now plan c is immediately start ors tell the mother to continue breastfeeding get it to the hospital okay and there give iv fluids very important what are the iv fluids that you are going to give ringer lactate with 5% dextrose say this 10 times diarrhea ringer lactate with 5% dextrose ringer lactate very important you have to maintain electrolyte balance you'll also give ors till it reaches the hospital and then you'll also give ampicillin uh, or amoxicillin with gentamicin see this <clears throat> what they are more focused on is the iv fluids you okay? can start the fluids it's severely dehydrated okay along with that you can give all this and then uh, you can uh, how much fluid you'll give like we told you around uh, 100 ml per kg you can give over few hours you should give for uh, small baby some few hours uh, for big baby so pediatrics is very uh, much about the age and the weight and all that so based on that you'll have to give it how many hours you have to see over how many hours zinc and then you should continue feeding okay very important what you should know here is start the ors then get the hospitalized and start the iv if you're already in the hospital starting iv okay that's great but if you are still transferring and all that start off with ors okay so this is all about and in uh, one more thing is in severe dehydration you should give uh, antibiotic right in some dehydration you are giving antibiotic only if the birth uh, if the baby's weight is less or if there is some additional condition but in severe dehydration you are also giving antibiotic that's it people so you have understood a very important uh, topic in uh, uh, pediatrics right look at this um, this is the ors uh, concentration remember uh, sodium 75 glucose 75 okay citrate 10 potassium 20 chlorine 65 is it possible for you to remember at least remember sodium and glucose are same 75 75 total osmolarity is 245 milli osmo per liter osm osmolarity per liter you have to mix this one packet uh, in 1 liter some nowadays you are getting smaller packets which will require less water also okay just look at this here you have so many types of ors in the world <clears throat> you have the uh, standard ors that they are not using this what they are we use is this reduced osmolarity ors this is the one you saw now see the total osmolarity is 245 so this is the reduced osmolarity osmolarity ors uh, sodium uh, 75 glucose 75 you remember right there is something also called as um, uh, resomal resomal is this uh, uh, rehydration solution for malnutrition so these people will get a little less uh, sodium okay and uh, they get little more glucose so this is this uh, risomal risomal rehydration for uh, severe uh, malnutrition rehydration solution for malnutrition okay so just come back here so you understood that there is uh, this reduced osmolarity ors this is the one that you standardly get when you go and ask in the medical shop okay now um, 
Apart from this, you also have something called a super ORS and super super ORS. Like life is so easy, right? So you have ORS, which will get whenever you go to the shop and buy, you'll get this type of ORS. But there is something called a super ORS and super super ORS. Now, what is a super ORS? Super ORS, please. Now, super ORS is where instead of these mono sugars, no, like glucose and all, they will put complex sugars like starch. Okay, so uh, food based, rice based. So. That's it. Super ORS is that, like having complex sugars like starch, etc. This is super ORS. Now, what is super super ORS? It has zinc. Super super ORS has zinc. So zinc will help in <clears throat> the intestinal epithelium and all regenerating. So the frequency of the diarrhea will become less. So did you understand this uh, ORS? All this you have to write in the exam, guys. Uh, do you know how much zinc you should give the person? Uh, because this is very important to write, right? You'll get some marks. Zinc you should give. 10 mg per day for less than six month, and 20 mg per day for greater than six month. <clears throat> okay, this is the zinc. Um, how much you should give? For how many days should you give? For around 10 days you can give. For 10 to 14 days, 10 to 14 days they are saying. Okay, for two weeks you can say. So that zinc also we told you. Now, did you understand this um, extra information? ORS, resomol. We told you. We told you about uh, super ORS, super super ORS, dose of zinc. Everything we have told you so that you'll get enough marks with, when they ask you about diarrhea. But the story is really not over. You have to know the fluid. Like we told you in Plan B, there are three types of fluid here: daily fluid, deficit replacement, maintenance fluid. Everything you should know the values. So look at the daily fluid requirement here. Up to 10 kg, 100 ml per kg. That will become for uh, 10 kg. It will become around one liter. Okay. Then coming to deficit replacement. So this is the deficit replacement. 75 ml per kg. Then you have maintenance fluid therapy. So we are telling you around 10 kg means it will need uh, one liter. Okay. <coughs> this is one more table. And this is the other table. Okay. So hope you have understood uh, diarrhea management, guys. WHO plan A, plan B, plan C, ORS, so many types, zinc, how much to give, fluid replacement. Bye bye. So guys, in this diarrhea, just a few more points. Okay, you have uh, in diarrhea, you have acute. Under acute, it can continue and become persistent diarrhea. And then, as usual, you have the chronic. Okay. So, uh, persistent diarrhea is acute diarrhea which continues after 14 days. Okay, that is persistent diarrhea. Chronic diarrhea is insidious in onset. It doesn't start suddenly. That is chronic diarrhea. Okay. What is persistent diarrhea? Look at this. <coughs> It is um, a diarrhea which is uh, of infectious etiology. That's what they are suspecting, and it is. Um, Uh, starts acutely, but it lasts more than 14 days. It can be because of pathogenic E. coli, UTI, pro cow milk protein allergy, because of antibiotic usage, because of Cryptosporidium, that is a fungus, isn't it? And this is a vicious cycle. You know, the intestine is not allowed to recover. It is causing diarrhea. Diarrhea is causing this. so it's a vicious cycle. Okay. And how will you manage this? You have to give yogurt. Remember yogurt, yogurt, yogurt curd, isn't that curd? Why are they calling it as yogurt? So basically, it will have less lactose. Okay, if you want to give milk, then you can mix it with cereal. That's what they are saying. And then you should always give multivitamins and minerals like copper, iron, magnesium, zinc. So you should give vitamins for these children. Persistent, right? So you want them to recover. So you will correct uh, same principles only. You will correct dehydration, electrolytes, hypoglycemia, right? So what will you give? Ringal acid, five percent dextrose, kind of a thing, right? The same thing. Electrolytes, hypoglycemia. <clears throat> uh, then you will do some evaluation. Nutritional therapy, we told you, you should give a lack. Uh, sorry, yog yogurt. Okay, yogurt. You will give. Then there is some diet here. So reduced lactose. So you will give yogurt basically to these people, right? Then uh, chronic diarrhea. What is chronic diarrhea? Just now we told you. Focus, people. What are we looking at now? Chronic diarrhea, persistent over. Chronic is insidious in onset, and um, the causes of chronic diarrhea is a huge list. This <coughs> chronic diarrhea causes <coughs> cow milk protein allergy, lymphangiectasia, 
lymphangiectasia, urinary tract infection, cystic fibrosis, immunodeficiency, celiac disease, tuberculosis, chronic ulcerative of tuberculosis, inflammatory bowel disease, GRDS, if they have some parasite there. Hmm? So you should think about all this, okay? And, and like we don't have enough types of diarrhea, now we have more diarrhea. Look at this. Small bowel diarrhea, large bowel diarrhea. Small bowel diarrhea, diarrhea means what will be there? What, what, small bowel diarrhea means? There won't be blood and all, but there will be uh, absorption problem, right? Because small bubble, so much of uh, absorption it will do. So, uh, malabsorption will be there. But large bubble means blood will be there in that, okay? So, absorption uh, wise carb carbohydrate protein absorption, that is not a problem with large bubble, okay? What else you want to look at? Look at it and understand. They are saying if it is because of small bubble, there is unusually offensive smell to the stool, okay? So, if it is so smelly, it might be because of... Small bevel.